bringing his sheaves with him. You know, it's not enough to weep. We can, we can have our hearts touched and never do anything. Uh, he that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, you know, taking the, the word of God. Uh, that's what people need. People need the Lord. And, and I hope this morning that if you don't know Christ, that you'll, you'll receive him. But if you do know Christ, that you'll share him. Listen, the, you'll never lose by giving the Lord to someone else. We're going to look in Acts chapter 1 this morning. We're, we're taking several main themes of, of missions. Last week we looked at giving. Uh, you know, our, our finances affect all of our life, and uh, we need to give. And for missionaries to go, we, we support them and we help them. This morning we're looking at going, sharing the gospel with people. I remember a former pastor used to say, he said, I've been further under the house than a lot of people have been taking the gospel. <laughs> and you know, it's true. Some people just never go. Uh, we need to go. The, the, the least is better than nothing. You know, just go across the street. Uh, singing that, that one song, you know, uh, maybe there's some place I could serve the Lord. And I thought, Stafford, there's a place. <laughs> serve the Lord there. Uh, you know, what a, what a blessing it is. We had a whole world of, you know, that God can, where God can use us. And the place to start is here, and the time to start is now. now Acts chapter 1. Um, this is a very familiar portion of Scripture. Listen, this is a very simple message this morning. I don't apologize for that, but I just, just warn you. Uh, but let me say this, you don't get much deeper than salvation either. Amen. Acts chapter 1, let me read starting in just a few verses, starting in verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? They were concerned like a lot of people are. Jesus, when are you coming again? And when are things going to get better? <laughs> and here's his answer. He said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. He said, I'm not, I'm not telling you when I'm coming again. I'm not telling you when things are getting better. Here's what's on now. Ye shall be witnesses. And I, I think it's important that he says both. Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea. Now, this is not something we can do by ourselves. We have to work together. God calls us as a church uh, to share the gospel. We send out missionaries, and our missionaries start churches. I'll just tell you, I believe a real missionary starts churches. <laughs> All right? And uh, that church then sends out missionaries. And on it, on it goes. God has given us this, this job of, of taking the gospel. And uh, we need to be witnesses to reach our Jerusalem. And we use that expression. I, I, I think you understand what it means. Jerusalem was their hometown. God called them to Jerusalem. You know, it's easy to think about, oh, well, not easy, but it's different to think about going somewhere else. Oh, maybe I'll go here. Maybe I'll go there. Well, what about here? What about the neighbors that you're going to see every day? <laughs> what about the people in, in your community? Uh, yeah, people, people need the Lord. And for us to reach our Jerusalem, we need to realize that we've got to go with the gospel. Number one, people need to be saved. Uh, th that's a very simple message this morning. People need to be saved. I if you put it on a personal basis, unless you turn to Jesus, you will go to hell. Boy, that sounds stark, doesn't it? And that's not the first thing I say to people. <laughs> uh, but, you know, when we think about missions, unless they turn to Jesus... They will go to hell. That's right. And that should break our hearts as we think about, you know, uh, these people that God loves and, and God knows and cares about them and sent his son to die for them. Well, you know, in, in chapter 2 of, of Acts, Peter got the opportunity to preach the gospel. Big crowds were gathered and he preached Jesus. Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 22. I'm, we won't read the whole chapter, but in his message he says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you've taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. 
right there in just those few words is the gospel. That's what Paul, the Bible, describes as the gospel, the death, burial, resurrection of, of Jesus Christ. And, and Peter preached down in verse 36, then he says, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. He preached Jesus. People need to, to hear about the Lord Jesus Christ. They need to hear the gospel. And as he preached, the power of God went to work. You now we read Acts 1.8, ye shall receive power. What we're relying on, we're not relying on tricks and, and schemes to try and win people to Christ. We're relying on the power of the Holy Spirit. And it only works when we turn it loose. <laughs> when we share the gospel, uh, the word of God with people. It's not my words. It's not your words. It's the word of God that will change people's heart. Peter, later on, talks about how, how we're born again by the word of God. That's what people need to hear. And as he preached, verse 37, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Boy, don't you wish people would ask you that more often. <laughs> what must I do to be saved? You know, I've, I've very rarely had that happen in my ministry where people, I remember one time a lady called out, well, what do I need to do to be saved? And man, that's, you like that, you want that. Uh, they, were, they were under conviction from God's Holy Spirit. And he says then in, in verse 38, Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He tells them what to do. He says, repent. Uh, the problem was, down in verse 40, he says, a typical Baptist sermon, with many other words did he testify and exhort, <laughs> saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. That word untoward means crooked. See, the problem is, we're crooked. <laughs> we don't like to admit that. You know, I meet a lot of nice people, but God says we're all sinners. All of sin comes short of the glory of God. Uh, we're crooked. We live in a crooked generation. Listen, if you fit in, and that's kind of the way we, we feel about life. I, I, don't, I know I do. Maybe you do. You, you want to fit in. You want to feel like you belong somewhere. Listen, if you fit into this world, it means you fit in with a bunch of crooks. And it's just the truth. God said this is a crooked generation. And uh, we need to repent of our sin. And we need to turn by faith to Jesus Christ. He's made that... That same Jesus, both Lord and Christ, he's the answer. Later on in Acts 4.12, he says, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's the name of Jesus. He's the Savior. In Romans 6.23, he says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Have you ever been down in Brisbane and you get these people trying to give away things? You know, you know, most people don't take it, do they? Now, they're trying to sell something usually, or you know, there, there's always a hook in it. But you know, with salvation, we're trying to give something away. The best thing that they'll ever get, uh, that'll change their life, that's changed our lives. And uh, yet, not many want to receive it. You know, as he talks there, he says, Repent ye, and repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me say this, baptism doesn't bring remission. He's not saying that baptism washes away our sin. Faith in Jesus does that. Uh, if someone said, uh, my uncle went to prison for stealing cars, you, you wouldn't think he went to prison in order to steal cars. He went to prison because he stole cars. And uh, remission of sin uh, doesn't come by baptism. Uh, baptism comes because of remission of sins. You know, if you understand that, I, I hope you do. Uh, faith in Jesus is what brings remission of sins. In uh, Romans chapter 3, uh, everywhere in Scripture really, Romans 3, 24, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that's in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood. It's not by some work we do. It's not by something uh, physical that we do that, that saves us. It's by the blood of Jesus Christ. And, and, the, and baptism doesn't give us the Holy Spirit. Uh, faith in Christ does. In fact, in, in Romans, he says, if, uh, if you don't have the Spirit, you're, you're none of His. And he said this message was to everyone. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. In verse 39, he says, The promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Uh, this message is to everyone. People need the Lord. 
Uh, for us to reach our Jerusalem, people need to be saved. Let, let me ask you, have you been born again? Are you saved? If, if you were to die today, do you know for sure, based upon God's word, that you'd go to heaven? That's what we're talking about. You, knowing from God's word that you've given your heart and life to Christ, that you've received the, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, to reach our Jerusalem, people need to be saved. And when they get saved, Christians need to be obedient. It should change your life when you trust Christ. And that's what he talks about then following in verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Uh, what did they do? Well, they believed, first of all. Uh, then they were baptized. And then they continued in, uh, he lists it there in verse 42. They didn't just continue, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They continued in fellowship. You know, that's not talking about having a meal, because that's next. He says they continued in breaking of bread. And that's talking about spiritual fellowship. As Christians, we should have spiritual fellowship. You know, we should talk about uh, the things of the Lord. We should encourage each other. Sometimes we need to rebuke each other and, and, and exhort each other and so on. There needs to be fellowship. And then he says, and in breaking of bread. And, and that's not talking about the Lord's Supper. He doesn't refer to, he doesn't use a slang expression for the, for the Lord's Supper. That's talking about eating together. That's a Christian thing to do. Uh, someone has said, when Baptists meet, they eat. <laughs> and that's not always true. But uh, we like to eat, and it's scriptural. Uh, breaking of bread and in prayers. You know, it's a good thing to pray. I remember being at a church and uh, seeing some people just, you know, while everybody's milling around, you know, it gets pretty noisy, doesn't it, sometimes? And we're talking and fellowshipping. And there was two or three people over here just praying. They were just standing there, and they didn't pray long, but there, evidently there was something they needed to pray about. That's a good thing. We should do that regularly. It shouldn't be, we don't have to have a prayer meeting to, to pray. Uh, we need to continue in the things of the Lord. We need to be, to be faithful. In uh, verse 46, it says, They continued daily with one accord. Uh, they were of one accord. They were guided by God's word. Uh, you know, every Christian should be baptized. Uh, they should follow the Lord in, in believer's baptism. Uh, they should be an active member of a, of a Bible-believing church. And he, he says that they that believed were were baptized and they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Uh, that's to the church. Verse 47, the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. And what a blessing it was. That was a big church. They wouldn't fit in our building, uh, but that, that, that town knew that something was going on uh, with the Lord uh, behind it. This is God's method to reach our world. It's Christians. People getting saved and obeying the Lord and banding together as a, as a church. And then you'll see as you go through the book of Acts, then sending people out and sharing the gospel in other places. Uh, missions. Um, you know, my, my family's testimony, uh, I probably shared it with you before, but before I was born, when my mother and father were still children, an evangelist came to town. He was a faithful man. And, you know, a church would have sent him. He would have been a, a, a faithful a uh, godly man. And as he preached, people began to get saved. Uh, my grandparents got saved. Uh, my mother and father were in their separate homes at that time. They were just young people. And, and they both got saved. My, one of my uncles was away at school, and he heard about it. He thought they were going crazy. Well, he came home. He got saved. Became a preacher. Uh, my middle name is his, his name. Uh, you know, people were changed because somebody obeyed the Lord, because the church was faithful. And then they continued. You know, my parents didn't just get saved and then ignore it. They continued. When they got married, they had a Christian home. They took us to church, and they presented the gospel. And, and, and you know, we got saved, and our, our grandchildren have gotten saved. And, you know, it continues when people are faithful. That's our part, just to be faithful. You know, we don't have to save the world ourselves. Christ came to save the world. We just do our part, being faithful. What, what do they say? The best ability is dependability. And it's true, as a Christian, just, just be faithful. Uh, people need to, to be saved. Christians uh, need to be obedient. And then, to reach our Jerusalem, Christians need to witness so that people will be saved. 
And we read Acts 1.8, and really that's where I'm, I'm headed this morning. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and under the uttermost part of the earth. For people to be saved, they have to hear the gospel. I don't know why, but God didn't choose to have angels share the gospel. They'd have done a lot better job, I think, but that just wasn't God's plan. We've got it written on our front sign here, but God didn't write it in the sky. God does put a, I think, a yearning in people's hearts. And they don't always understand what it is, and they fill it with all the wrong things. But in Acts 5.42, it says, Daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and and preach Jesus Christ. Uh, we need to share the Lord with people. He had said there in Acts 1.8, Ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now at that point they were told to wait. It was just a few days, but uh, we don't have to wait. <laughs> There's nothing we're waiting for to, to share the gospel. They were, they were waiting for the day of Pentecost. Uh, the Holy Spirit has come. And when you get saved, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. He says, ye shall receive power. Then he says, ye shall be witnesses. Now, in case you don't understand um, this really complicated word, ye means you. All right? Now, I'm being sarcastic. I'm, I'm going to preach against sarcasm next week, but uh, <laughs> it's okay today. <laughs> ye means you. It's not hard. All right? Ye shall be witnesses. That's, that's us as Christians. Shall be. Now, we said that at that time that was future for them, but not anymore. He says, behold, now is the, the time. Today is the day of salvation. And then he says, witnesses. You know, in a physical way, we understand that word, witnesses. When something happens and they have a court case, they call witnesses. And they say, I saw this happen. I heard this. He did this to me. Uh, it's a witness. And you know, many of these early Christians were killed for following Jesus. You ever stop and think about that? How could they do that? They could do it because they were witnesses. They had seen Jesus. They had seen Him die. Many of them had seen Him alive again. They knew that this was the truth. They were willing to stake their lives on it. In fact, John put it this way in 1 John chapter 1. I love the way he, he writes this. That which was from the beginning, which we've heard, which we've seen with our eyes, which we've looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. And he comes it from every direction, doesn't he? That which we've seen and heard declare we unto you. And that's what he's saying. And, you know, we're, we're not going to see the crucifixion. Jesus is not going to stand at the end of your bed and, and give you a show. That's not going to be what we're going to witness. But God is going to do something in your life if you'll let him. That's what you need to be a witness of. What God has done for you. You know, you hear of a man named Thomas, and, and what do we put with his name? Doubting Thomas, poor guy. Uh, he doubted the Lord, you know. He said, unless I see, I won't believe. Well, Jesus came and said, okay, okay, Thomas, put your hand in my side. See my hands. I don't think he ever did. He just said, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said this, Thomas, because thou hast seen me and hast believed, uh, I'm sorry, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. That's us. That's us. We don't have to physically see the crucifixion and the resurrection, but we do need to see that God spiritually has done something in our, in our hearts and lives. Uh, many people describe it as feeling like a burden rolls off. You know, they get saved and, man, the burden of their sin is gone. Now, not everybody's going to have the same experience or feeling. But we need to know that God has done something for us. You see, that's what we're witnesses of. Paul oftentimes would share his testimony. And as you read his testimony, sometimes it's only a few minutes, sometimes only a few words. He would always take past, present, and future. He'd say, this is what I was. I was a sinner. I, I was a religious sinner, is his testimony. Then I met Jesus. And sometimes he'd share different things, you know, what all happened. And this is how I'm different now. That's the testimony we can have as Christians. What we were before we got saved. Maybe you were just a child. Maybe you were a, uh, really deep into sin. Uh, you know, all different situations. But you met Jesus and He saved you. You prayed. By faith you believed Him. 
and God changed your life and gave you a, a testimony. Uh, what have you witnessed? See, that's the question. It's not what they witnessed. What have you witnessed? What has God done for you? Do you have a time when you can say, that's when I got saved. I realized I was a sinner and, oh, and I, you know, I felt the burden of my sin, but then I, I trusted Jesus and the, the burden rolled away. Uh, what a blessing. The blind man, do you remember him in John chapter 9? The, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were giving him a hard time because Jesus had healed him. And they kept saying, you need to, you need to tell people that that Jesus is a sinner. He's, he's no good. And uh, the blind man said, let me, let me find the, the verse here. He says, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. <laughs> that was his witness. It wasn't much. It was a lot to him. <laughs> let me tell you, it was a big deal to him. He knew it. He'd witnessed it. It, it had changed his life. And that's what we need in our relationship to the Lord. People need the Lord, and, and it's based on what we talk to them about. For us, is based on what the Lord has done for us. And we take them to God's Word. Christians need to witness so that people will be saved. And he says that we are to be witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and on the uttermost parts of the earth. And the way we do that is as a church. Where we start... He names the place, Jerusalem. That's where they lived. If Jesus had come to Australia, well, he couldn't do that because the Bible said he had to come a certain place and a certain time. But, you know, if he'd come somewhere else, he'd have, he'd have named somewhere else. But that was Jerusalem. And let me tell you, it was tough being a Christian in Jerusalem. And we look at this and we think, oh, yeah, well, that was great. Lots of people getting saved. But you know what? There was also a lot of people getting thrown in prison. Uh, later on in Acts chapter 4, it says, they, as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, and being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection of the dead, they laid hands on them. I often wonder what that means. <laughs> they laid hands on them. I probably meant they beat them up. I'm not sure. And put them in hold. <laughs> they threw them in prison until the next day, for it was now eventide. And that, that testimony comes out several times. Acts chapter 5, verse 18 they laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. Uh, later on, verse 33, he says, uh, When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. It was tough being a Christian in Jerusalem. It wasn't easy. All of those apostles, save John, were killed for being a Christian. Wow. And it's where people knew them. People knew him in Jerusalem. It's like your, your place. People know you. And when you talk to them about the Lord, they, they say, oh, yeah, we know her. We know him. Let me tell you something. I, I've found if you'll be faithful to the Lord over time, people will begin to say, huh, they're still going to church. They're still living for the Lord. Maybe there's something in that after all. They won't always believe you at the first witness, because they think you'll get over it. <laughs> and some people do. They make a false profession. They, they're not really trusting the Jesus of the Bible. But we need to be faithful. We need to have a testimony. Uh, there was a man in Luke chapter 8 that got saved under Jesus' ministry. He'd been demon-possessed. Everybody in town knew him because he had terrorized the town. He, he's, we know him as the demon, demoniac of Gadara. And when he got saved, he wanted to go with Jesus. He said, uh, he sought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, return to thine own house and show how great things God hath done unto thee. This, what a testimony he would have had. Here was a man, he was so changed, people were afraid when they saw him in, dressed and in his right mind. Now, I, I, hope that's not, <laughs> yeah, I hope that's not your testimony that people think, oh, that's weird, got clothes on. <laughs> And this man, uh, who's that guy? Oh, didn't recognize him with clothes on. <laughs> He's normally running around screaming, you know. Um, when he got saved, he was a different man. He was changed. And that should be our, our testimony. He told him, go home. Go to your Jerusalem. And, and folks, that's, the, that's where we need to start. You know, we can support missionaries and we can go on mission trips, but the place to start being a testimony 
is with the people that you actually talk to. Sharing the gospel. Now, sometimes you might have to go out of your way. The Bible talks about how Jesus must needs go through Samaria. You remember that story? He didn't have to go through Samaria, except he wanted to talk to somebody there. Was it Zacchaeus? I, I think that's the story. Uh, you know, sometimes you're going to have to go out of your way to talk to people, but you'll find for the most part, God will send people that you can talk to. Uh, there's people, they'll even ask you sometimes. Uh, we need to be witnesses. Uh, for us to reach our Jerusalem, we need to realize people need to be saved. We need to be saved. We need to be faithful to the Lord and, and to our church. And, and we need to take the, the gospel to lost people. You, very simply, you can't witness tomorrow. You can't witness somewhere else. You've got to witness here and now. You've got to take the opportunities that, that God gives you in your home, in your family, in your neighborhood, in, at your workplace. Now, these are very, very simple, basic things this morning. People getting saved. Those people obeying the Lord by baptism and uh, being a part of a, of a Bible-believing church. And then those Christi Christians witnessing in their Jerusalem. That's, that's the core of, of missions, isn't it? And this morning, I, I would encourage you, are you saved? And one of the reasons we don't, people don't share the gospel is they don't know the Lord themselves. They've never experienced uh, being born again, trusting Jesus Christ as their Savior. Uh, you know, if, if you died... You know for sure, as you stood before God, if He said, why should I let you into my heaven? I mean, what would you say? I, I know a lot of people I meet, they say, well, I've been good. Well, God disagrees with that. He says there's none good. Have you been born again? Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior? And if you have, are you obeying the Lord? Maybe God is bringing people to your mind even now that you need to witness to, that you need to be a testimony to. And God can give you the, the opportunities, and He says, Ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. Uh, take advantage of what God has done for you. Uh, maybe this morning uh, you need to trust Christ. Maybe this morning you need, as a Christian, to obey the Lord. Uh, whatever your need, uh, the Lord uh, would encourage you through me this morning to, uh, to be a person of faith. Let's go to Him in, in prayer, with our heads bowed, and in an attitude of prayer, maybe the Lord is, is speaking to your heart. Maybe this morning you need to just uh, get honest with God and, and confess your own sins and trust Him as Lord and Savior. Maybe you're a, you're a Christian, but you need to obey Him. Maybe you've never been scripturally baptized, or uh, maybe you're not a, a part of a, a Bible-believing church. Maybe there's folks that you should be witnessing to, and you've not, you've not done that. Father, help us, Lord. We, we ask that you would use us. Lord, if there are those that are not saved, I pray that your Holy Spirit uh, would convict them of sin. Help them to see that you're the only sa Savior, the only way to heaven. God, help us as Christians to love each other, to love you, but as well, Lord, to, to love sharing the gospel with those around us. God, help us to be honest and open uh, with those who need to hear. Thank you, Father, for your word this morning. Help us to take this simple message and and to live it. I pray these things in Jesus' name. We're going to take our